Good morning, good evening to everyone in different parts of the world. My name is Leticia Berrisveitia and I'm moderating this webinar on behalf of Elizabeth Robert as she is now on mission. So we are on the seventh week of our GRB moderated course and today is our second web conference on Macedonia as a case study. I am very glad to present today pan today's panelist who is Ivona Paunovic. We would like to thank our colleague Ivona for accepting our invitation today, as we know she's very busy and it's an honor to come with her presentation. Ivona is working as a program officer with the UN Women Program uh, Office in Macedonia since 2010. She also manages the country portfolio on gender responsive policy making and budgeting as part of a multi year um, regional project on GRB that's implemented in three Southeast European countries and the Republic of Moldova. She has extensive professional background in the field of ending violence against women and domestic violence, and also has led and coordinated a number of projects for prevention, protection, and combating violence against women and girls. So before joining the UN system in 2005, she was actively involved in the civil society movement and activities for advancing gender equality and improving the status of women in the country. She's a graduate sociologist with a master in business administration and a current MA candidate at the Gender Studies Program of the Institute for Social Science and Humanities in SCOP. As usual, um, also the rest of our team is connected and I would like to thank them for, for their support, support in the background. So you will see right now on your screen um, uh, a bit of, a, of an overview of the logistics of this webinar because uh, as you know, it's very important for us to have your feedback and, and also to receive your questions. So before the, giving the microphone to Ivona, I will show uh, how you, are you going to post your comments through the program. So you will see in the menu of the GoToWebinar program on your screens, and there's a block at the right side uh, that's called questions. So what we would like you to do is to type your questions there throughout the whole presentation I will be here on the background compiling them and we will um, make the questions to Ivona at the end. So uh, don't forget to do this as said at any time during the presentation and also please note that this webinar is being recorded and you will find it at our YouTube channel, the Young Women Training Center YouTube channel, but also for your easy access it will be at your course space in the e-learning uh, platform of the training center. So uh, don't you worry, as you will get a follow-up email with this uh, information as well. And if you have any connectivity or internet issues, uh, be mindful to, to check. Um, well, uh, right now we're doing it only for sound, but you also, in the case that we project webcams, you have the, the option to hide them in the upper menu bar above this presentation. So without further ado, I would like to give the microphone to Ivona. Ivona, you can uh, say hi to the audience right now and also share the presentation. Whenever you're ready. Yes, okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Leticia. Uh, I hope that my presentation is visible now. Uh, yeah, it's visible. Perfect. Okay, okay. I hope I will be able to also move the slides. Yes. Um, so thank you everyone who managed to join uh, today's webinar uh, and uh, I know due to the time difference many of our colleagues, especially those in Central Asia and uh, other parts of the, of the uh, ECA region cannot uh, manage because it's becoming really late. But um, uh, I would immediately start with presenting briefly the, 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 the content of my presentation and then proceed uh, fast through the beginning of the presentation, which is like some kind of an overtira, which will give you some overview on the legal and institutional background when it comes to implementation of GRB, while the main uh, and a little bit of historical overview on how the whole implementation of GRB evolved in, in our country over the past decade. But the main focus of the presentation is uh, uh, the implementation of the methodology on GRB and the experience in working with line ministries, with uh, the 
basically uh, in implementation of GRB at central level in, uh, in Macedonia. I also selected some uh, key results to show how uh, impact of uh, GRB is being measured at central uh, level. Um, uh, just to give an, a brief overview on the legal and policy framework um, uh, in, um, in terms of uh, equal opportunities and uh, uh, empowerment of women in Macedonia, uh, I will mention that uh, the law on equal opportunities of women and men, which was initially uh, introduced in 2006 and then amended in 2012, rep represents the main uh, uh, law which obliges all entities, all uh, institutions to incorporate the principle of equal opportunities for women and men within their strategic plans and budgets and also to monitor the effects and the impact of their programs on women and men. Um, this obligation uh, applies to both central and local uh, level uh, institutions or, or budget users, as we call them in the terminology of GRB. Then also the country has adopted the national strategy for gender equality for the period 2013 to 2020, which aims to promote equal opportunities for women and men in all spheres of social, political, economic and cultural lives, life. And it defines all sectorial priorities on promoting gender equality. In support of the national strategy, a national action plan on gender equality uh, is uh, developed for the period of 2018 and 2020. In 2012, our government introduced for the first time a strategy for introducing gender responsive budgeting. This strategy um, is expired in 2017. So as of 2018, GRB is uh, one of those embedded as one of the strategic priorities under the National Action Plan for Gender Equality. Uh, in 2013, for the first time, the Ministry of Finance in Macedonia amended the budget circular or the instructions for uh, preparation of the budget uh, uh, budgets by central budget users by introducing gender provision in it, obliging central selected number of central government institutions to pilot GRB and to submit gender budget statements along with their uh, annual budget requests. Uh, to support and to operationalize the, these uh, provisions in the budget circular, the government also adopted a methodology for introducing GRB, and I will speak more about the methodology um, uh, in, the next, in the, the next slides. Uh, very briefly, the, uh, this is the, the I, would, I would like to introduce you with the gender mechanisms in, in general in the, in the country and uh, the whole oversight structure when it comes to gender equality. So the main gender machinery uh, uh, or the main gender mechanism in the country is the Department for Equal Opportunities between Women and Men, which is situated in the Ministry of Labor and Social Policy. And then you will see in the chart, in all line ministries, there, there are um, appointed coordinators for equal opportunities, which are responsible to lead and monitor the work on introducing gender perspective in um, sectorial policies and programs. Also, this applies to the local level because the law obliges also the local level authorities to appoint coordinators for equal opportunities. When it comes to oversight and uh, on the implementation of GRB, uh, in line with the law on equal opportunities, um, the government is establishes an intersectorial consultative and advisory group on gender equality, composed of civil servants from different line ministries, experts, independent experts, civil society organizations, etc. And also within this sectorial, intersectorial uh, advisory group, there is a subgroup on gender responsive budgeting. And on the other side, like the elected officials who have the main oversight uh, role and who are responsible for keeping the government accountable to gender equality, mainly uh, uh, at central level, that's the parliament and the commission for equal opportunities, while at the local level, these are the commissions for equal opportunities between women and, and men. Um, if we go historically through the the, the, the whole like GRB uh, story in, in Macedonia, I can say that for the first time the, the GRB concept was introduced back in 2008. And uh, th there is a typo, it's 2008, 2009 uh, in, in the presentation, when the first capacity building initiatives for gender responsive budgeting were basically implemented 
in, in the country, supported by UN women. Uh, but these were like only few sporadic interventions which were implemented at local level and basically only few uh, gender analysis of specific local programs were, were carried at that time. Um, while in 2010, the first gender analysis of the active employment policies were, were, was conducted more on a macro level. In 2012, the government for the first time introduced a national strategy on gender responsive budgeting. And the following year, the, uh, um, immediately after the adoption of the government strategy on GRB, the Ministry of Finance decided to amend the budget circular to introduce a specific gender provision and to mandate line ministries to implement these provisions. Um, in support of this uh, um, uh, amendment of the of the legislation, or specifically of the budget circular, uh, the government adopted a specific methodology for introducing gender responsive budgeting. And in 2014, this pilot phase of the, inter of the methodology started the when the first line ministries developed their gender budget statements. In 2017, 17, the budget circular for central level budget users basically expanded the uh, gender provisions not only to pilot ministries, but made it mandatory to all line ministries and state institutions. So basically this year we have in Macedonia a very fav favorable situation and we have almost all, not almost, but all line ministries, which are uh, uh, 14 in total, uh, to apply GRB methodology and to have at least basic capacities to develop GRB statements for selected sectorial programs. So they all submitted gender budget statements to the Ministry of Finance, which are already published on their website and the website of the Ministry of Finance. I have just to make one clarification. Um, since the budget circular instructs and mandates line ministries to submit gender budget statements for selected sectorial programs, that means that GRB is not yet uh, gender is not yet mainstream across all sectoral policies and programs, but only in one to two to maximum two programs per line ministry. Um, sorry, I cannot move. Okay, yes. Uh, before proceeding with uh, with uh, my presentation, we have a few questions that we would like to uh, to ask the participants if, and to give them a few minutes to respond. So, Leticia, handing over to you for the questions. Thank you, Ivona. So, yes, I'm going to launch the first question. You should be able to see them now on your screens. So, it says, has your country adopted any law or policy that regulates the introduction of ERB? It's yes, a yes or no question. So answers are coming up. You still have a few seconds to vote. Make sure that you answer. Still a few seconds. Has your country adopted any law or policy that regulates in the introduction of GRB? Okay, coming up. Last second to vote. Perfect, so I'm going to sh share now the results. And that's the result. So uh, for 63% of our audiences, that's a yes. And for 38%, that's a no. So Ivona, you want me to put up the second question now? Yes. Okay, so coming up, we have a second question for you. You should be able to see it now on your screens. Is GRB used as a tool for policy making in your country at central level or local level? So we have a few seconds to vote. Is GRB used as a tool for policy making in your country at central level or local level? Okay, everyone voted quite quickly this time. <laughs> the um, <laughs> results are coming up 100% uh, central level. So back to you, Ivona. Okay. Oh. I believe you. We are we are looking at your the presentation, so you can just go on. Yes. So thank you, thank you for everyone who responded to to these questions. These were questions. These questions are basically uh, to to just give us an impression of how how your countries, the countries that you work in, uh, have progressed in terms of implementation of GRB. Um, 
I would like now continue with the, the, the main uh, um, um, purpose of, uh, of today's uh, presentation, which is the use of the GRB methodology, the application of the GRB methodology at central level in Macedonia. So basically what I want to reflect first is what are it's on the benefits uh, of the implementation of gender responsive budgeting. And um, uh, what uh, a gender responsive, responsive budgeting uh, primarily uh, brings in, the, in, in terms of improving the quality of life of citizens, of, of women and men in all spheres of, of life. It brings to reduction of social and economic disparities, which are resulting from an equal position of men and women. Um, it also uh, helps to reduce poverty and especially to reduce feminization of of poverty. It helps to understand and provide more visibility of the impact that different policies have to various categories of citizens, especially to the most vulnerable categories of, of, of citizens, like, the, um, like women in rural areas, women from ethnic minorities, uh, uh, single mothers, etc. Then it enables an equitable distribution of budget funds in a fair, just, uh, and effective uh, uh, manner. Um, the use of GRB also improves the efficiency and the effectiveness of, of policies and programs, and it, it ensures that those who are most in need will benefit from uh, public funds equally. It also promotes transparency and accountability of, this, of the uh, institutions. Um, GRB also uh, supports the state to progress in terms of achieving democracy, achieve, uh, improve, improving the economic growth, and also uh, advancing the gender equality agenda. Also, uh, the implementation of GRB is kind of an incentive and like encouragement for the institution to really uh, keep and to, to collect and analyze sex disaggregated uh, data and to uh, create um, policies which are based on, on evidence, which reflect the realistic um, needs, and needs and concerns of uh, women and men. So practically the methodology on GRB that was introduced back in 2014 by the government of Macedonia, it doesn't represent a legal act, uh, a bylaw, which was the initial idea, which was proposed by the national gender machinery. But then the government decided not to, not to call it, not to adopt it as a separate bylaw of the law on equal opportunities, but um, a government decision was made to, and this, um, and with the, 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 the document, was approved at a government session, which makes it mandatory for all budget users at central level. This methodology is uh, an instrument that um, an instrument and a guide uh, for successful implementation of the obligations which are arising from the law on equal opportunities of women and men. It provides a common understanding on gender responsive budgeting. It and um, it explains the whole process and the ways how the state administration bodies or line ministries, I would like for ease of reference, I will call them line ministries, although this applies also to all other central uh, government institutions. It gives them like, if it explains the whole process, how they should mainstream gender when they are creating the policies, but also when they are devising the programs, the sub programs and all their plans and budgets to implement the policy objectives. At the same time, it also gives a good timetable. I will share with you the methodology and you will see that there is a detailed and very simple timetable uh, to, uh, for the inclusion of gender perspective in all of the established processes uh, of strategic planning and budgeting. Um, but also it gives, an, gives a very clear guidance, guidance on how to monitor and how to evaluate the long-term implications, uh, effects and impact of programs on women and men. Um, The implementation of the GRB methodology uh, was um, is, um, conducted in a few phases. Uh, so the whole GRB, GRB process takes place in three different phases. And uh, the first phase was uh, the pilot phase when the GRB, the gender responsive budgeting was implemented um, by only a pilot, not pilot number of institutions. This was in the period from 2014 to 2017. Um, so basically uh, the, the whole uh, cycle was envisaged that every three years, every year, uh, a 
three new three to four new additional line ministries are being uh, are uh, uh, involved in the whole process of piloting the GRB uh, methodology. Uh, in 2013, the first uh, four institutions were selected and their programs continued to be monitored for three additional years by the end of 2016. And then in 2000 and, and then every additional year, four new, three to four new institutions joined the whole uh, process. Um, uh, so with the final aim, by, two, 20, by 2019, that all line ministries are able to pilot and implement the GRB methodology. The second phase of the cycle uh, is the cycle when gender responsive budgeting will cover all public administration bodies, so all institutions at central level, when all of them will be able to select at least one program or sub program and to develop gender objectives and gender output indicators for that program. Um, so practically, uh, the second phase of gender responsive budgeting was uh, uh, started in 2017 and it was supposed to end in 2019. While, as I already explained, due to high interest among the, the, the line ministries, we already have all line ministries piloting the GRB methodology already in, in 2018. And the third phase is the phase that will start in uh, 2019. And basically, Basically, this is the phase when institutions are already fully prepared to move to, to move uh, toward monitoring of horizontal programs that are, whose complexity requires better coordination and already built-in capacities for implementing gender responsive budgeting. The responsible institutions for the implementation and the oversight uh, of, the, of the implementation of the GRB methodology are uh, the Ministry of Labor and Social Policy, which plays a key coordination and mentoring roles and mentoring role, um, then the general secretariat, which examines whether the institutions have defined gender uh, indicators for their uh, sectorial um, uh, programs, and then the Ministry of Finance that checks whether the institutions have submitted gender budget statement for their program along with the budgetary requests, and whether they have um, uh, uh, fulfilled the obligations um, arising from the budget circular. Um, the whole, the whole, this chart is basically uh, describing the whole uh, process of GRB. It may be a little bit confusing, but um, I will just very briefly explain. Uh, the whole process starts with the selection of program for gender budget analysis in a specific uh, institution. Usually it depends on the institution itself, which program budget will be will be selected for uh, for gender analysis. Then uh, the institution establishes a working group for the implementation of the of the uh, gender responsive budgeting. And this uh, um, uh, this um, working group is usually uh, led by the coordinator on equal opportunities, but it also involves uh, representatives uh, uh, from the administration, from relevant uh, um, um, sectors in the in the specific uh, line ministry, as well as uh, representatives from the budget department and the strategic planning uh, department. Usually the decision for this working group is being made at uh, the level of uh, at the ministerial uh, level. And then the process of implementation of, uh, of GRB, um, it is very important to note that uh, it needs to be aligned with uh, the strategic priorities of the government and also aligned, uh, and at second line it needs to be aligned with the strategic and operational plan of the respective institution. Then um, the, uh, it needs to follow the instructions of the uh, Ministry of Finance for the preparation of the of the draft budget and the calculations, the budget calculations of the institution, and then to follow the mm, methodology for developing the GRP statement. Uh, in, in the fourth phase, uh, the uh, institutions are following, like after they submit the gender budget statement, they to the Ministry of Finance, they need to continue monitoring uh, uh, the impact, the progress of the implementation of their program and the impact of the program on, uh, on women and men. And in the final phase, they need to submit annual and then uh, three annual reports to the Ministry of uh, Labor 
and social policy or to the uh, sector for equal opportunities which uh, and the, the intersectorial working group on gender uh, responsive budgeting which is responsible to really uh, uh, assure quality and to provide feedback to the line ministries in terms of improvement of their gender objectives, of gender indicators, and provide specific recommendations for devising of their future uh, uh, programs. Um, so this slide um, gives an overview of how gender budget statement is being developed, what are the steps. And I will share with you the methodology, as I already said, which gives the template for uh, uh, for the gender budget statement, which is a very simple format. And it's basically, it was basically developed in consultation with all all line ministries and state administration representatives because it really needs to fit the purpose and not to be a complex and very uh, um, difficult document to develop so that we don't risk reluctance among the, 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 um, the state administration. Uh, uh, so in step one, after the selected program is after the the program for uh, gender analysis is being selected, the um, the ministry needs to uh, provide some data and information about the program. So to provide some sort of a brief overview of the program and to describe how the program contributes and it's connected to the strategy on gender equality and how it will contribute to uh, uh, gender specific gender equality objectives. Uh, the second step is related to situational analysis. And here they need to explain what are the gender relevant issues that this program will um, that this program will uh, address. Uh, basically, here the, the institutions are encouraged to use the available gender uh, sex disaggregated data that they possess in their institutions, but also to conduct uh, um, to, to collect some secondary data uh, if uh, if that, that if, if possible. Uh, also, in this uh, situational analysis, they need to also consider all factors uh, that would contribute to, to gender equality. In step three, they need to propose concrete interventions. They need to really list interventions and actions or concrete measures, propose concrete measures as part of, part of that program that will reduce gender uh, inequalities in a specific sector or specific area. In step four, um, uh, step four is related to expected results of the program. So basically the institutions need to describe through which practical steps and interventions the program will provide better services or better opportunities or better measures for women and men and how the uh, uh, implementation of these measures would contribute to uh, promote um, uh, gender equality. For some sectorial programs, it's very difficult and the institutions required additional expert mentoring and guidance from the sector for equal opportunities or, or from, from uh, technical experts on GRB because, for example, for non-typical or programs which are not related to social protection or out of the social sphere, like let's say the, the programs on uh, communal affairs or infrastructural programs, it was a bit complex and difficult, but it was, um, but gender could be mainstream in all sectorial programs. So, uh, with additional mentoring and expert support, all line ministries managed to basically develop their gender budget statements. And I will give you a few examples to see which specific uh, uh, sectorial programs have been subject to gender budget analysis. Uh, then, in um, in this uh, at this stage, also they need to develop specific uh, gender indicators and at output level that will help them to measure the uh, progress um, and the uh, impact of of their uh, programs. And uh, of course, the final stage is the um, the budget. Uh, so the line ministries, they need to present how the budget allocations uh, will be used for the specific program and which specific budget uh, lines would contribute to the expected, uh, to the anticipated gender objectives. Um, after the submission of the gender budget statement to the Ministry of Finance, the institutions uh, proceed with uh, monitoring, uh, like uh, continued monitoring of the impact, the progress and the impact of their sectorial programs. They measure the impact against the gender indicators that they uh, developed for the specific program. And at the end, as I said, they provide reports directly to the 
the sector for equal opportunities and the Ministry of Labor, uh, which um, ensures quality and uh, provides feedback for further improvement of their of their uh, programs. Um, okay. Now, uh, the next few slides will will just give a brief overview on the main. Um, I managed to to move the slide. Yes. Um, okay. So I hope it's visible because maybe the letters are too small. But these uh, two tables, I just wanted to give some to give you an overview of all programs and um, all institutions that piloted the, the, uh, the methodology on GRB at central level, and uh, to refer to some uh, to specific programs which were uh, subject to subject to gender budget analysis and for which the, the, the institutions have developed gender specific objectives. You will he see here on the left in the left column all the institutions. Um, for example, the Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs, together with the Agency for Employment, uh, they were the first institution that piloted the, the methodology on GRB back in 2014. And they analyzed the programs for for self-employment. So basically the main objectives, uh, gender objectives were related to improved access to information for women in terms of accessing the labor market measures like self-employment, uh, the active, uh, the self-employment uh, measures. And also they introduced specific measures uh, to, for encouraging women to participate. Uh, main indicator for measuring the progress for the percentage of women and men that were opening um, uh, businesses in the coming uh, years. And then they followed with uh, monitoring the impact of, of this program. They implemented the program and all these measures through various activities at central and at local level, involving also the local uh, the, uh, branches of the Agency for Employment, uh, etc. Um, I'm not going to go through all uh, of these programs because you can still go back to, to, the, to my presentation and see. Also, it, uh, we have like, very interesting programs analyzed uh, by the Ministry of Defense and uh, um, their program on the military academies. So, like military academies, a specific budget program within the Ministry of Defense. And uh, they came, uh, came up with very interesting gender objectives because they identified that they need to increase the number of registered women candidates, for example, or to improve the representation of uh, um, of uh, the of uh, gender contents in their teaching processes in their curricula and or also to improve the accommodation capacities uh, which were one of the main reasons why women would um, would not apply in the, in the military academy etc um, these are some pictures which are uh, taken uh, during some of the training and mentoring process at central and at local level and um, some uh, of them also portray uh, the impact of, uh, of uh, some of the programs, like the program on the program on uh, self-employment, which encouraged more women to establish their own businesses. Um, since we don't have much time to go through the uh, key results and impact on GRP at um, at uh, central level, I just selected a few. Um, which are uh, related to uh, the program on self-employment and the program on reproductive health. Because basically for these two programs, line ministries have uh, already submitted their, uh, their midterm uh, um, reports and evaluations. And uh, they noticed uh, progress in terms of impact on uh, and, and uh, impact uh, and uh, like positive impact of their programs on uh, gender equality. Specifically for the self-employment program, um, the analysis in 2014 showed that uh, very, there is a very low number, like lower number of women in comparison to men apply and benefit from the self-employment program. And as I said, different measures have been taken to, uh, uh, to increase the number of women applicants and the number of women beneficiaries. So basically the analysis of the self-employment program in 2015, 16 and 17 showed that there is an increased participation of, of women um, 
showed increase in the number of trained women uh, from 35.6% in 2015 to 42% in 2016, which slightly dropped uh, in uh, 2017, but again, it shows progress in comparison to, to, the, to the baseline. Um, also, there was an increase in number of women that registered their own businesses. So in 2015, there were only uh, 333 businesses established by women, and this number increased to 427 in 2017 and dropped slightly to 404 in 2017, which means that this uh, program evidence, uh, evidenced uh, uh, progress in terms of uh, impact on and uh, improving the, the uh, uh, accessibility and uh, the, the benefit of this program for women, uh, for women and both men. Uh, and also on the other slide, you will see the, um, some of the results and the impact of uh, um, uh, 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 on the pro of the program on reproductive health. Basically, in 2013, a gender budget analysis was uh, conducted for the pro program on early detection of malignant diseases. And um, the main finding was that there is a lack of awareness and lack of utilization of free screening measures by women, especially for breast cancer and pap screening. Uh, um, so, um, as you can see from the results, the measures that the ministry introduced uh, based uh, like as a result of gender analysis was to increase the awareness and utilization to uh, and also to increase the allocation for uh, for the for the program itself. Uh, so there was a, like a gradual increase in the um, mm, um, number of conducted tests and screenings. Uh, uh, in like um, from 2014 to 2015 these are the data that I had available and that's why I presented this data but um, there is continuous progress in terms of usage of uh, free uh, screening uh, uh, measures by women okay so um, gender responsive budgeting is related to a lot of challenges and um, um, and I would like to refer briefly to some of them, which are very country specific for Macedonia. Uh, I assume that many other countries are facing the same challenges. Uh, first of all, the country has uh, still has a line budgeting system. And um, also there is no system in place to really track the allocations for gender equality and women empowerment. Uh, also, uh, the gender is still not part uh, regu legally regulated by the organic budget law um, or the law for budget execution which um, is a big obstacle in in terms of implementation of like full implementation of uh, grb uh, by uh, central budget users also, uh, but one of the opportunities at the same time for um, overcoming these challenges is the ongoing public finance management reform in the country and the commitment of the government to really transition towards from line to program based budgeting. Also, currently, the government is conducting a legislative revision and there is like a new organic draft organic budget law, which will hopefully incorporate gender as a, uh, a gender equality both as a principle but also as a specific provision a specific article um, in uh, the government also committed to in, as of 2019 to really launch the new program budget uh, uh, classification which will enable much smooth and easier implementation uh, of uh, the of the grp methodology uh, one of the these, these are the, the momentum and the, 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 the entry points for basically taking further our work on gender responsive budgeting and to really support the government to uh, strengthen the capacities of all central budget users uh, to uh, implement the new requirements that will arise with both with the uh, reforms of the public finance management but also with the new provisions on gender equality which will be incorporated in the organic uh, uh, budget law 
I do not go that much to uh, to the opportunities of next steps. This is very much country specific, but uh, I can say that we have a strong commitment from the government to really uh, toward gender equality and empowerment of women. And GRB is really recognized as a very important um, tool and an enabler that will uh, contribute to more gender responsive strategic planning and policy making uh, uh, and also decision making when it comes to the public to public uh, spending. Um, as I said, GRB is integral part of the action plan for gender equality. It's one of the strategic priorities and um, also the government is fully committed to uh, to take more proactive role, the Ministry of Finance basically, to take more proactive role in, uh, in, in ownership on this process, because so far, as in many other countries, the Ministry of Labor and Social Policy or the National Gender Machinery has been in the lead in terms of implementation of, of gender responsive budgeting. What I also want to emphasize that um, we see also the parliament and especially the parliamentary, uh, the Club of Women MPs or the Parliamentary Women's Caucus as very important oversight body and very important in demanding the uh, uh, integration of gender perspective in all fiscal policies at uh, national and, and a local uh, level. Uh, I would close my presentation here and uh, I hope it was clear. I hope I didn't speak too fast. <laughs> um, I will uh, open the floor for uh, any questions which Leticia can uh, can collect and maybe um, uh, show uh, so that I can brief respond but I also remain available if, if you have any additional questions I remain available to respond to you um, after the the webinar also I will try to share with you some um, tools that we have developed in Macedonia uh, as I mentioned the methodology on gender responsive budgeting also I can uh, share the templates for developing the GRB statements and for the re and the reporting templates but also some very interesting and nice tools for engendering the participatory processes, etc. And also, uh, there is another very, very interesting uh, uh, manual that we developed a few years ago. For it's a guide for central, uh, for for public officials at central level for implementing GRB. It's a small guide for public administration, basically a very simple, simple tool. Thank you so much. Handing over to Lestia. Thank you so much, Ivana, for this wonderful presentation. And it, it, it's incredible to be able to um, walk through the experience of Macedonia and the GRB matter with you. So we do have a uh, couple of questions uh, from, from the audience. I would like to remind all colleagues that uh, you can share your questions still. We have a little more time. So if you have any question for Ivana, it's a, it's a great chance to to type them through the chat box right now. So I'm going to uh, project my screen for uh, the first question. Wait a moment, please. Okay, you should be able to see it now. Are you seeing it on screen, Ivana? Can you confirm? Uh, no? Yes. Yeah, I see. Um, okay. This so is from, yes, this is a question from from Alexandra, who is also your um, tutor from the for the GRB moderated course. I also say thank you, Alexandra, for being here with us today. And it says how far Macedonia went with moving from Lyme to program budgeting. Also, any chances for the law changes to make mandatory GRB in the law or budget? What would you say, Ivana? Okay, Alexandra, thank you so much for this question. And this is basically something that I briefly mentioned in the presentation. This was one of the main obstacles, one of the main challenges when it comes to implementation of gender responsive budgeting. And Alexandra knows very well because like Serbia is much more advanced when it comes to, to, to gender responsive budgeting, just because they really transitioned the government of Serbia had, uh, a transition to full program budgeting back in 2015 while Macedonia is lagging behind. Uh, yes, the, um, in late 2017, the government adopted a new program on uh, public finance, on public finance management reform. And as part of this reform, they committed to from line to program and 
program-based budgeting as of 2019. So all uh, preparatory work has been finalized. And now the, the organic budget law is in um, procedure of being uh, amended or probably a new budget law will be um, will be drafted which will incorporate gender equality provisions we already uh, we um, UN women is um, already supporting the ministry of finance in this effort to uh, introduce and to like to make mandatory grb mandatory in the new loan budget uh, by sharing different examples and experience from the region, like from Serbia, from Albania, where GRB is already part of the organic budget law. And hopefully by the by the beginning of, of 2019, we will have a new organic budget law where GRB, which will make GRB mandatory for all central level budget users. Thank you, Alexandra, for the question. No, thank you, Ivona, for your answer. And uh, I believe we have no other questions from the audience. I encourage you to to do it in the final um, minutes that we have with Ivona here. So uh, I'm going to take the opportunity, Ivona, to make a question myself because I, I well, listening to you, I thought that it was very interesting that you have been, uh, your experience have been, as a program officer there in, has been almost throughout the whole uh, GRV, mainstreaming GRV, uh, experience in Macedonia. So you said from 2008, 2009, and you have been there from 2010, am I right? So I was, yeah, I was wondering if you can uh, ask like a, like a closure to this webinar, do you have any key learning points or a key takeaway points from colleagues that can be uh, going through any of the stages of the process that you described, maybe an earlier stage or a later stage? The question is, what should we uh, all learn from the experience of Macedonia? What would you say? Thank you, Leticia, for the question. You are absolutely right. Uh, the first, as I mentioned, the first ever initiative or like the first uh, introduction of the GRB concept was back in 2018, but it was started at local level. Um, I, I practically joined the office in 2010, but I was managing the ending violence against women portfolio while uh, I joined the GRB team in 2014. But that's not important in this case because I was following the work on GRB from the very beginning and I'm very much familiar. What I can draw from the whole experience in all these years on, uh, on, on, um, on GRB, um, on working on GRB in, in, in Macedonia is that um, it takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. And uh, from a very abstract concept, this, at least this is how GRB was perceived by uh, stakeholders in Macedonia uh, a decade ago. Today, uh, it is a common language used by all uh, stakeholders at central and also at local level, because we also have a very extensive component working at local level. Um, so uh, as one suggestion or as one lesson learned from this whole, from all this experience, the GRB uh, is a process which really requires strong uh, machinery, a strong uh, uh, driving engine behind. Uh, governments are not able to do it without external support, technical expertise and guidance and mentoring, etc. Even after similar, several years of uh, doing, uh, conducting capacity building uh, on GRB and, and direct support to sectoral policy and program analysis, etc., they still require UN women or external expert support to, uh, to, um, to be able to effectively do the work. So practically for GRB programs, it is important that they are planned in a long run, which means that they are not one of uh, interventions, that they uh, um, foresee a long term or at least a continued training and mentoring. Because this training and mentoring approach proved to be a very efficient way to, um, very efficient way to uh, keep the um, stakeholders that keep the government institutions accountable uh, to really slowly and gradually transfer the ownership to them because only with one-off trainings it is not possible to uh, to achieve that it is only possible if you really extend and continued mentoring um, process uh, uh, at individual level at level of uh, like individual institutions or individual uh, municipalities. So this is one of the lessons learned that are drawn from all this experience in working on GRB. 
Okay. So thank you, thank you so much for that, um, Yvonne. It's very interesting, and and yes, we we it also um, combines with our approach to training. We always say that training does not uh, do it by itself, and it's it's a long run process with gender mainstreaming in general, right? And the mentoring part is very interesting as well. So thank you for that. Uh, we have another question, as you see now on your screen, uh, from Natalia. And it says, uh, did, your experience, did you experience any opposition from religious leaders? And if yes, how was it addressed? Well, the answer would be very simple and short. We, we didn't <laughs> okay. experience any, any, um, yeah, any opposition from any side, like uh, nor from religious leaders or from um, any um, institution or any uh, level of, of, of governance basically the uh, even like uh, even with the previous government which is more like conservative and uh, there was uh, the period of like backlash on gender equality not only in Macedonia but also in the whole region um, right. Basically, there was no big resistance on implementing gender responsive budgeting because the way gender responsive budgeting is presented is that something is has nothing to do with overall political affiliation, uh, you know, um, uh, issues or religious issues. It's something that is that is bringing uh, uh, well-being to all citizens, women and men, uh, people from different different ethnicities, from different backgrounds, uh, uh, um, and especially it gives uh, also attention to the needs of those who are most vulnerable and excluded in the society. Thank you for that, Yvonne, and that's uh, that's great news that you had that experience. And uh, also, Alexandra, it just so you have her feedback, says that she wishes you all the best uh, with the effort to change the law and budget system. So she also believes that's great news that you're telling us. So um, we don't have any more questions for now. <laughs> and, and I believe we're running also out of time, so I just want to uh, uh, thank you again for this uh, wonderful presentation and sharing with us your experience and remind all participants that this uh, recording will be made available very th soon through your eCampus space and that uh, as Ivona said she will be sharing with us some tools and checklists and, and some readings right Ivona? Yes, that we will. Yes, that we will also post there for you, and you will also be following up with Alexandra through the forum and conversing around those issues. So uh, that's it for today. Wanna thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to everyone. And and have a good evening for you and for for everyone uh, in different locations of the world. We will connect soon again. Thank you. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye. Also for you.